Molly Fry Wilmington studied English and children's literature at Baylor University, ethics at Notre Dame's Vita Institute, and theology at Duke University. And here she's kicking off a new biography series for kids of Christians in history who have demonstrated courage, faith, suffering, and love. And the first book in the Here I Am series tells the story of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who bravely followed Jesus during a dark time in world history. It's called Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the teacher who became a spy. Welcome, Molly. Thank you. It's so great to be here, Care. So, Molly, why did you set out to do a series that highlights Christians in history? Well, when my kids were younger, they wanted to have more stories than just what was in the Bible or more of the just kind of folklore type stories. And I had been reading some books on Dietrich Bonhoeffer and William Wilberforce, who helped to end the slave trade and slavery in England. I mean, he's like their Abraham Lincoln for the Americans out there listening. And of course, everybody knows Abraham Lincoln. Um, So I wanted my kids to know these people I had been reading. And I'd been wanting to write children's books for years. Um, And I had been reading some really great biographies with my kids as well. Um, Things I hadn't learned growing up in school or even in college about who started the Red Cross or I don't know, just lots of fun stories from biographies. So I thought, well, I can do this. And there were two biographies in particular that I liked. One was about Davy Crockett, who wore a raccoon skin hat, and he fought at the Alamo in Texas, which is where I'm from. Um, And it was funny, like in the children's book, he wore a live raccoon hat, and he like, water skied on alligators. And at the bottom of every page, you had these two raccoons who were making wisecracks. And so I thought, well, I'm going to make a fun children's book like that. And there was another one uh, with George Washington and the General's Dog. Very good book. Came out um, around 2003, somewhere in there, 2007. And it tells the story of George Washington but in a way that's very relatable to children, again, where it talks about how he loved animals and um, how animals were used on the battlefield. And that's kind of how I got the idea of having my dog narrator in my book, too, because I thought, oh, that's fun. You know, I can bring in the dog humor and um, the more serious things that dogs do, like protecting us and um, sounding the, the alarm and things like that. So. That's where mm. I kind of got the idea, and I read a children. I read a book called How to Write a Children's Book and Get It Published when I was in college. My grandmother bought it for me, and so I just put all that together and came up with a story so that my kids could learn more about Bonhoeffer because I did try telling them originally about him, and that held their attention for about thirty seconds. <laughs> well, there is a lot about him, and if anyone wants to do a book report on Bonhoeffer this school year, you have tons of research on your website that didn't make it into the book. But I do love that you have this sheepdog named Shep, who's the guide. And uh, actually, there, Bonhoeffer had a dog. So, what what else is the role there? Because you actually do reference a sheepdog behavior mm-hmm. in the book too. Mm-hmm. Well, Shep the Sheepdog is actually made up, but Bonhoeffer, he did have a dog. And then there was another dog in Bonhoeffer's life that really captures the heart of a lot of people who read Bonhoeffer. And it was one day, one of the children in his church, um, Pastor um, Bonhoeffer was a pastor and a teacher, and he sometimes would teach children. And this little boy came up, he was 10 years old, and he was sobbing. Well, actually, he, he, Bonhoeffer could just tell something was wrong. So he asked the boy, and then he started sobbing. <clears throat> Turns out, Mr. Wolf, his German shepherd, had died. And Mr. Wolf was his companion every day and loved him so much. And the child couldn't understand how God um, would allow um, his dog to die and if he would see his dog again. And so it's this sweet story of Bonhoeffer encouraging this child. And Bonhoeffer was even impressed by the child's faith after having the conversation. So I originally had him as Mr. Wolf, but then a theme developed over time. About nine months into writing, I thought, well, what if I take Mr. Wolf? He had been in the book, but it was kind of a sad story, right? Um, mm-hmm. And I took him out and I said, well, what if I make him the narrator? And then I had already been talking about how Hitler was like a sheep in wolf's, or a wolf in sheep's clothing and was kind of sneaking up on people and deceiving them and lots of different things like that. So I decided, well, why don't I say that Bonhoeffer was like a good sheepdog who stood firm against and protected the sheep and sounded the alarm by, you know, barking like a, a good sheepdog. And then the good sheepdog, 
follows the shepherd. And so then I had the good mm. shepherd theme, um, you know, from the Lord is my shepherd from Psalm 23, but also John 10. There's some other um, references in the Bible too to the sheep and the sheep know my voice and they follow me and I protect them. So um, that's really cut at the heart of the book. So mm. it's a story about Bonhoeffer, but really at the end, um, it's really about Jesus. And in the very end of the book, on the last um, page, I say that when Bonhoeffer was praying um, with some prisoners, the guards came in and told him to come with them. And Bonhoeffer knew that had to be the end. The war was going to end in three weeks. Of course, Bonhoeffer didn't know that at the time, but they were kind of mm -hmm. on the move. Hitler was mad about many things. And Bonhoeffer turned to the fellow prisoner and said, this is the end, but for me, the beginning of life. And again, this is the sheepdog telling the story. And so the sheepdog's looking at us with joy in his face, mm -hmm. but not, not overly excited, more of like a peaceful joy. And then Bonhoeffer is looking up to, to heaven and praying, which is what was recorded right before his death, that he was praying mm -hmm. and had this look of peace on his face. And the doctor that witnessed his death, which I don't say in the book how he dies, um, is the doctor who witnessed his death said he had never seen another person die so peacefully. Wow. I love just seeing how your brain goes and puts all these things together in the book, because that that alone takes a lot of, of craft. Um, but I do want to talk a little bit um, about you know, kids, and we'll get there in a second. But also, you even touched on this just now, sacrifice. There's not a lot of kids books about sacrifice. Uh, Bonhoeffer lived out two of God's most important commandments. Do you want to talk about those? Sure. The, the two greatest are to love God and love your neighbor. And of course, Jesus paid the ultimate sacrifice by dying on the cross, and that we're called to follow him. And for me as a younger child, I had suffering in my life, but I had this idea that when I became in my 20s or 30s, life was going to be better. It's going to be mm -hmm. easier. You know, my father had passed away when I was young. So life was just hard um, and harder than some of my friends. Um, but then I learned, well, life is really about suffering, right? We, we love people so much. And then we're going to suffer when things um, when they die or if somebody has to go to prison or, you know, there's so many things or your country gets attacked. And uh, I wanted to help kids and not just help kids in my country or my state, but also around the world. You know, the, the church has always been under persecution mm -hmm. and there's always been evil in the world. So um, to love God and to love your neighbor are just, it's such a beautiful way. And Bonhoeffer definitely laid down his life and he also kind of put his life on hold for 12 years as he mm. wasn't getting married. He wasn't having children. He wasn't working in the university or the church anymore, but he knew that he was following God. So what he thought was going to be his path and what he wanted, God, you know, brought this other path. And of course, also the war did. Um, and so for 12 mm. years, he, he, he put that aside and followed Jesus. So, of course, it was very rewarding. And he did have many great friendships with the students and with other people. And he was engaged to be married. Um, mm -hmm. So he continued to have that hope for this life, but definitely lots of hope for the next life. He very much uh, recognized what his important mission was. And it's mm -hmm. fun because even the readers of the book, they have their own little mission. There's little secret code similar to what Bonhoeffer used as a spy to communicate. So the kids can actually do that while they're reading the book. Um, but speaking of kids, because we don't have a whole lot more time, but I do want to really just address the role that kids have. Because in the book, we see that kids actually did help fulfill his mission. But... Mm -hmm. You're also encouraging kids to stand firm in their faith today. So what's the message for kids here? What role do they have? Yes. Yeah, so kids can see uh, kind of from, from the model of how Bonhoeffer lived his life, um, how they can also live and how they can follow Jesus. And in the beginning of the book, I talk about fun stories about Bonhoeffer. A lot of times people don't know that he had a sense of humor and that he taught children. He connected really well. He could retell stories in fascinating ways for kids. Um, and 
But there's also, it shifts into talking about how he cared for other people. When he mm-hmm. went to America, he saw poverty in New York City. And then he went down to Mexico and he saw poverty. He also saw the racism. It was in the 1930. So he came back and he had a softer heart. He actually had a warming of his heart. His faith had been very much head knowledge. He had never mm-hmm. been active in the church. Uh, his family worshiped at home. Um, and so for him, that's where the whole book Life Together comes out. And a lot of people still read that book um, about what it looks like to be family together. So for children, they can see how Bonhoeffer helped um, somebody who was sick. So we went to visit one of the students. Um, and the fact that he took kids on trips to the beaches and played with them, kids are often undervalued. And that importance of <laughs> caring for children is very important, even for children to see. Um, they'll remember that as they become adults. And then later, you know, they, like you said, they help with the, the secret codes. Their eyes could see the dots better in the books. But then even when Bonhoeffer's in prison, I have another montage of him um, sharing a scripture verse uh, where he's sneaking it and handing it to another prisoner. Another one um, where he's in a prisoner's cell, cell praying with them, and he had to sneak into there too. Um, and then another one where he's sharing some of his food. Um, through his cell to another cell. And, uh, you know, kids really resonate with that. When they're in school, a a teacher pointed this out to me when he read my book, that sharing your food in school is a big deal because you know you're going to be hungry. You know, you're you're not going to be fully satisfied the rest of the day. But that's a power a child has. And a child has Mm. power to care for other people and see how they can bless them, no matter where they are, no matter how dark, like, you know, if, if, even if your child's sad, maybe you've lost a family member, they can still be blessing people around them. And that's kind of the equivalent to what it was like for Bonhoeffer, because I do say in the book that he was sad and lonely in prison, but that he, he said to God, okay, God, use me here. And he Mm. realized I can be a pastor in prison. And he was, he was so loved. And even the prison guards, I do say that in the book, um, cared about him and tried to help him. And he even had the chance to escape, but because it would have put somebody else's life in jeopardy, he decided not to. Mm. Well, it really is an inspiration for kids for all ages, really, to stand firm in our faith, but to just be looking at how we can help others love our neighbor. And so it's put in a really visually great way for kids, too. It's the first of the series, Here I Am. And we're out of time, but real quick, what's the next book going to be about? Well, the the other two books in the series are on C.S. Lewis and Lottie Moon, who was a Baptist missionary to China. And I didn't write those. I was really excited when I heard it was going to be C.S. Lewis because I actually, in the beginning, knew more about C.S. Lewis than I did about Bonhoeffer. Um, but they're, they're really great. And then my next children's book will be called Mama's Little Ladybug, and it's about growing in the womb um, and a mm-hmm. sweet conversation back and forth between a mother and a child about the child's nicknames in the womb. And it ends with mm-hmm. a beautiful blessing prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Be at peace and grow well, my child. So I'm just love that. really love excited that. about the next book too. Awesome. Well, we'll put all the links on our website so people can connect with you for what's next. Again, Molly Fry Wilmington, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the teacher who became a spy. Thanks, Molly. Thank you. Thank you.